In 2008, Scarlett Keeling, an English girl, went on vacation with her family in India. Scarlett was very excited and happy about the trip as she had never left England before. However, the family trip, which was supposed to be something wonderful and unforgettable, ended up becoming a true nightmare. Scarlett's body was found in the waters of Anjuna Beach, half naked and with clear signs of violence and forced relations. Scarlett Eden Keeling was born in July 1992 in Stevenage, a city with an estimated population of 80,000 inhabitants and located in the county of Hertfordshire in England. She was the daughter of couple Fiona McCune and Richard Keeling, who separated when Scarlett was still little. Scarlett's mother had nine children from five different men, and family life was difficult. Fiona was a single mother, and the family's main income came from government benefits. The family lived in a small house in the village of Bradworthy, located in the county of Devon in England. Scarlett was Fiona's third daughter, and her two older brothers were also Richard Keeling's children. After separating from Richard, Fiona moved to another city and met a man named Christian Osborne. With Christian, Fiona had one child. Fiona's relationship with Christian didn't last long, and they ended up breaking up. Later, Fiona met another man whose identity was not revealed, and with this man she had another child. Her relationship with this man, unknown to us, also didn't last long, and they separated. Sometime later, Fiona met Paul Schreck. With Paul Schreck, Fiona had two more children. Fiona and Paul later moved to a rural area in the county of Devon in England. The couple's intention was to raise their children in a quieter area, away from the hustle and bustle of the city. However, shortly after moving to this rural area in Devon, the couple separated. After this separation, Fiona went through many difficulties with her children. Without money to pay the rent for the house where she lived with her children, she was evicted by the property owner. To avoid having to go out into the street, Fiona found an unconventional solution. She started to live with her children in an abandoned bus. The family's situation was desperate. Around the same time, Fiona met a man named Adam Foster, and with him she had two more children. Just like Fiona's previous relationships, this one didn't last, and she and Adam went their separate ways. According to sources, at this time, Fiona was no longer living on a bus with her family. They had moved to a small house in the village of Bradworthy in the county of Devon, as mentioned at the beginning of this video. The family's life had improved somewhat, but they still experienced difficulties. According to some neighbors, the family was calm and did not cause problems. Fiona's children were described as polite and well-groomed. Fiona intended to raise her children away from alcohol and illicit substances. However, being a single mother and having to take care of nine children alone, this was not an easy task for her. It is said that when Fiona's older children reached their teens, they began drinking alcohol and using drugs. They also had the habit of attending many parties with their friends, and at these parties they consumed everything they shouldn't have. Scarlett herself, who is the central figure in our story, was known for smoking a lot. Furthermore, Scarlett started a relationship with a boy a few years older. It's not very clear how old she was when she started dating this boy, but some sources say she was between 12 and 13 years old. Some people who knew Scarlett said that she looked much older than she looked, both physically and mentally. Even this photo you see on the screen shows Scarlett at just 14 years old. Looking at it like this, I can say that she looked about 19 years old. A few months before the fact, Scarlett wanted to join a band. She played sax and had the intention of being part of a musical group to improve her skills. She was described by her colleagues as a happy girl full of dreams. In the year 2007, Fiona met a man named Robert Clark. Fiona and Robert began a relationship, and in November of that same year, Robert invited Fiona and her children to spend a holiday in India. They had plans to stay in India for six months, and the region of the country they chose was Goa. They chose Goa because Robert had been there many times before. Fiona and her children had never traveled outside of England, so they were very excited about the idea of visiting another country, especially one so far away and so different from England. However, Fiona's eldest son did not want to go to India with his family. I didn't find information about the reasons, but he wanted to stay in England. In any case, this was not a problem and the family continued with their travel plans. Upon arriving in India, Fiona, her boyfriend, and her children stayed in Anjuna in the Goa region 
as their first destination. Anjuna is a village located on the coast of North Goa and is the destination for thousands of tourists. The family loved the place. It was something very different from what they were used to. After spending a good amount of time in Anjuna and enjoying the place a lot, Robert suggested that they go somewhere else. That was at the beginning of February 2008, and the next destination chosen by the family was Karnataka, another state in India. The journey time from the state of Goa to the state of Karnataka is more than five hours by car. If you go by bus, the time increases to more than 14 hours, so the family started preparing for this trip. However, as the family prepared to go on the trip, Scarlett told her mother that she didn't want to go with them. She wanted to spend the rest of the vacation in Anjuna. Scarlett told her mother that she was having a great time and that she had met a really nice guy. This guy was Julio Lobo, 25 years old. He was a tourist guide who had been working in the Goa region for a few years. Scarlett had befriended him, and he took her on several sightseeing trips as a kind of helper. Fiona was very reluctant, but after Scarlett insisted a lot, she allowed her daughter to stay in Anjuna at Julio Lobo's house. After that, the family headed to the state of Karnataka, where they stopped in the city of Gokarna. The agreement between Fiona and Scarlett was that after a few days, Scarlett should go to Gokarna too. So after a few days, Scarlett went to where her family was, as agreed. It was at the beginning of February 2008, and after spending a few days with her family in Gokarna, Scarlett asked her mother if she could return to Anjuna. There was going to be a big party there on February 14th, and Scarlett wanted to attend. Again, Fiona was reluctant to her daughter's request, but in the end allowed her to return to Anjuna. In Anjuna, Scarlett stayed in the company of Julio Lobo, during the day, she handed out pamphlets inviting other tourists for tours, and at night she went on these tours in which Julio was the tour guide. She also worked as a waitress on some boats to earn money. However, a few days later, Fiona's eldest son, who was the only one left in England, suffered a serious accident. The boy's condition was serious, and Fiona decided that she would return to England with her family to be by her son's side. She then called Scarlett to inform her about what happened, and also to arrange a meeting place so that Scarlett could return to England together with her family. That was on the 17th of February, and the agreement was that on the 19th, Scarlett would go to her family in Gokarna, and then they would return to England together. Scarlett wanted to make the most of the little time she had left in Anjuna, so she invited Julio and another friend she had recently met called Ruby to go out one last time around the city before she had to return to England. That day, Julio was feeling bad and said he was going to stay at home, so Scarlett and Ruby left alone. According to sources, the two girls went into town where they bought drinks and stayed at a bar. Afterwards, they decided to return to the beach where they stayed in another bar that was crowded. When it was around 1 a.m., Ruby told Scarlett that she wanted to leave. Scarlett then told Ruby that no problem and that she would go with her to the bus stop. As soon as the bus arrived, Ruby said goodbye to Scarlett, and the two agreed to stay in touch. Ruby got on the bus while Scarlett went back to Julio Lobo's house. The next morning, February 18th, Scarlett Keeling's body was found half-naked floating in the waters off Anjuna Beach. Upon being informed, local authorities went to the beach and removed Scarlett's body for analysis. Initially, the authorities' version was that Scarlett had overdosed while swimming in the waters at the beach and ended up drowning. Authorities also stated that there were no signs of violence on her body, and so they closed the case quickly. Upon being informed about what had happened to her daughter, Fiona quickly traveled to Anjuna in Goa. Remembering that she was in Karnataka, another state in India that is more than 124 miles from Goa, Fiona contested the official version given by the Indian authorities regarding what had happened to her daughter. She insisted that a new autopsy be performed on Scarlet and spent more than a month begging Indian authorities to reopen the case. When Fiona finally had access to photos of Scarlett's body, she saw that there were clear signs of violence, especially in the girl's private parts. It was then that Fiona was sure that her daughter was not the victim of an accident, but of a crime. A mother's intuition never fails. The Indian authorities agreed to do a second autopsy on Scarlett's body, and while that was being done, Fiona decided to investigate the crime on her own, 
as she knew she couldn't count on the police in that area to do so. Fiona, along with her boyfriend and children, searched the area around the beach where Scarlett was found. They also spoke to several people in hopes that someone knew something. During this search for evidence, Fiona found Scarlett's shirt, pants, and shoes in the middle of a forest close to the beach. This indicated that Scarlett had been dragged to this forest where she was the victim of the crime and was later thrown into the sea. In March 2008, the results of the second autopsy that was performed on Scarlett's body were released. According to the autopsy report, Scarlett's body had several injuries, 50 in total, most of which were on her private parts. And yes, unfortunately, she was the victim of forced intimate relations. A toxicology report was also done, and according to that report, there were traces of several illicit substances in Scarlett's body. Only after this second autopsy did the Indian authorities begin to investigate the case as a crime. In the midst of this, a key witness emerged. His name is Michael Mannion, and he is also from England, and was on the beach the night the crime occurred. According to Michael, he saw Scarlett staggering along the beach until she fell and couldn't get up. It was around three in the morning and Michael was having a drink at a bar that is on the beachfront. Michael said that Scarlett lay on the beach for a few minutes, until the owner of the bar he was at, a man named Luis Coutinho, went to Scarlett and helped her get up. After that, Scarlett walked into the bar where Michael was, and he said that she seemed quite drunk and even had difficulty communicating. Scarlett then sat at one of the tables in the bar, and a few minutes after that, a group of men appeared and tried to approach her, but Michael told them that she was feeling ill and wanted to be alone. With that, the men walked away and went to the other side of the bar. Sometime later, Scarlett got up and sat at another table in the bar, one that was further away. Michael lost sight of the girl for a few minutes, and after he managed to see where she was, he saw two Indian men with her. According to Michael, Scarlett spent around an hour in the company of these men consuming illicit substances. Afterwards, Scarlett got up and went towards Michael to talk to him. She told him that she was also from England and that she was 15 years old. She also said that she was not feeling very well, as she had consumed a lot of alcohol and drugs. After that, Michael said Scarlett left the bar in the company of two Indian men. Michael remained at the bar drinking for a while longer, until he decided to leave. When he left, he went to the parking lot to get his scooter, and at that moment he saw one of the men on top of Scarlett who was on the ground. Michael said he yelled for them to stop, but Scarlett didn't react and he thought everything there was consensual. So Michael got on his scooter and left. Still in March 2008, Indian authorities arrested two men accused of having committed the crime. They are Samson D'Souza, 28 years old, and Placido Carvalho, 39 years old. Guys, just to add information here, I believe that many of you must be confused because of these Portuguese names and surnames in many Indians that I mentioned here in the video. This is because the state of Goa was a colony of Portugal for around 450 years. Therefore, most people there have Portuguese names and surnames, as well as streets and even cities. Returning to the case in June 2008, the two men arrested suspected of having committed the crime were formally charged. In total, seven charges fell on them. But it took two years for the case against them to actually begin. That was in March 2010. During the hearings held, 30 people testified, including Michael, who was a key witness to the case as I already said, and Ruby, Scarlett's friend who was with her in the hours leading up to the crime. Among these 30 people, few could say exactly that they also saw Samson D'Souza and Placido Carvalho together with Scarlett Keeling that night. A chronology of the events leading up to the crime was put together through the testimonies of these witnesses, but because most of these people were very drunk that night, the chronology was a little confusing. Julio Lobo, the tour guide who befriended Scarlett and who gave her his house to stay, also testified. He said Scarlett asked him to go out with her and Ruby that night, but as he was feeling ill, he thought it would be better to stay at home. Julio stated that if he had gone out with both girls that night, Scarlett would be alive and safe in England today. When asked if he and Scarlett had a relationship, Julio said that they did have something, but it was nothing serious. Michael testified at a few more hearings, but in 2012 he returned to England. In the same year he was called again to testify, but he refused stating that he was being threatened and that if he went to Goa, his life would be at risk. As a result, 
all of Michael's testimony was considered by the court to be irrelevant and worthless. This would have a huge impact on the outcome of the trial, as Michael's testimony without a doubt was the most valuable. Fiona, Scarlett's mother, even said that Michael was a coward for not wanting to return to Goa to testify. She also said he should have done something when he saw one of the men on top of her daughter and not just scream and then walk away. Subsequently, Indian authorities sent a team to England to record Michael's statement, however, this did nothing as the court said it would no longer accept his statement. But this trip by Indian authorities to England was somehow not in vain, as during the time the team spoke with Michael, new revelations were made. According to Michael, he and Samson D'Souza were friends. Michael even stayed for a while in the house where Samson lived with his wife, a French woman called Cecile. Michael had known Samson for years, and on the night of the crime, Samson was working as a waiter at the same bar where Michael was drinking and where Scarlett last stayed before being found dead. Michael said he was horrified when he saw his friend attacking Scarlett. According to him, he tried to stop it, but was threatened by Samson and other men. Michael was very scared, and because of that, he decided to take his scooter and leave. Although this new information was revealed, it did not help much in the case, since, as previously stated, the court decided to discard all of Michael's testimony. Anyway, it came to light that Michael had known Samson for several years, and even though he considered him a friend, Michael was unable to stop Samson from committing the crime. Later, the defense of Samson D'Souza and Placido Carvalho presented a diary that allegedly belonged to Scarlett. In that diary, Scarlett would have written an excerpt in which she said she was sad and dissatisfied with her life. There was also a part in the diary where Scarlett said she was very ashamed of what she had done in Anjuna and that at times she felt trapped. Through this diary, the defendant's defense argued that Scarlett had taken her own life because according to them, she had been exhibiting self-destructive behavior. The entire case against the two accused was delayed for more than eight years. Changes of judges and prosecutors linked to the case caused everything to stagnate. I did not find information whether in the meantime the two accused were arrested or were allowed to answer for the crime in freedom. Only in September 2016, the trial of Samson D'Souza and Placido Carvalho took place, and to the sadness of Fiona and all the people who wanted justice, the two men were acquitted due to lack of evidence. Fiona was outraged. She accused the police and the court of corruption and said she would not rest until she got justice for her daughter. In February 2017, Fiona successfully appealed to the Supreme Court of India. Therefore, a new trial for the two accused was scheduled. During this new trial, other prosecution witnesses appeared, including a bouncer from the bar where Scarlett had been before becoming a victim of the crime. This security guard is Merle Sager, and he testified saying that he saw the moment when Scarlett arrived at the beach staggering around 3 a.m. He said that he already knew Scarlett and knew that she was staying at Julio Lobo's house, as the two were always there on the beach. According to Merle, Scarlett asked him if he could take her to Julio's house at 5 a.m. Merle said he would take her. However, when the time was given and Merle went to Scarlett to take her away, Samson D'Souza was with her, and he told Merle that he should leave as he would take care of Scarlett. According to Merle, this request was not in a friendly manner but in a threatening tone. The prosecution stated that the two defendants filled Scarlett with illicit substances, even though she was already drunk, with the clear intention of taking advantage of her. The defense stated that there was no physical evidence linking the two men to the crime. The trial practically only served to gather more information about the crime, as the case dragged on for another two years. It was only in July 2019 that the Supreme Court found Samson D'Souza guilty of all charges. Placido Carvalho, on the other hand, was initially found guilty of complicity, but later had the charge dropped and was found innocent and acquitted. Samson D'Souza received a 10-year prison sentence with hard labor for the crime against Scarlett Keeling. In an interview, Fiona said it wasn't enough, but at least it was better than Samson being free. In total, it took more than 11 years of struggle and anguish to try to bring some justice to Scarlett. Obviously, I, I regret that decision for the rest of my life that I let her go to that party. I wish, wish more than anything I'd, I'd said no and kept her with us. But I can't change the past. Um, I just I have to accept it and get on. This case generated a lot of controversy. 
especially regarding the issue of how Fiona raised her children. Do you remember Robert Clark, Fiona's boyfriend at the time of the crime? He gave an interview saying that Fiona was far from being a good mother. He said that Scarlett used to use drugs in front of her younger brothers and that Fiona let the girl do whatever she wanted. According to Robert, in the second month of their vacation in India, they had already spent all their money on alcohol and drugs. He said that after that, they even went hungry in the country. Scarlett Keeling's story was made into a film in India. In the year 2012, the film Anjuna Beach was released. This film, which was produced by Sikandar Khan and stars Ukrainian actress Natalia Kozhinova, tells the story of Scarlett Keeling's final days in India. The film received a lot of criticism from Goa authorities, who stated that it would only serve to scare away tourists from the region. Scarlett's family lawyer also criticized the film because Sikandar Khan, the producer, did not consult the family before making the film. Despite this, Fiona wasn't too angry, as the film doesn't portray Scarlett in a negative light as many thought. Scarlett Keeling was only buried four years after the crime, in 2012. This is because Indian authorities remained in possession of her body, claiming it was necessary until investigations were completed, and as the whole process dragged on for several years, they kept the victim's body all this time. Scarlett was buried in a garden prepared for her on the family's small property, in a simple ceremony attended by friends and family. Her body was taken to her final resting place by her father, brothers, and friends.